A uh, good day, everybody. Welcome back into Mining Stock Daily for our first set, uh, first interview of corporate and uh, not corporate, it's actually market commentary. Uh, my head's so rattled. I'm sure anybody who's a listener of the podcast and follows the uh, miners and the juniors and the metals, uh, uh, this is a hard one to take. So uh, I promise we'll keep it candid with our friend Jordan Royburn today from the Daily Gold. Jordan, um, boy. The great, the great uh, metal smash of 2021. Can we coin that? Uh, yeah, I think that's fair to say. But we have to see where it goes. Um, I mean, it, it's. Uh, I mean, if it, if if today or the last 24 hours was the worst uh, or the worst of it, then uh, I guess you could call it that. But um, you know, if. Uh, there's more selling to be had in the near future than, uh, you know, it's more than a smash, but I mean, I guess a smash is apt for the last 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of pulling the chart back a little bit and I was like, okay, let's look at the monthly chart and what's the best case scenario would, and from what I see, maybe the best case scenario is a double bottom on the monthly chart. Could that be something to watch? Yeah, I mean, we did get down to that double bottom support uh, last night, you could say, and gold rallied back, and it's faded, I guess, here in the U.S. Um, it's, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts about where things are going, but technically gold, um, it's looking pretty ominous. I mean, it was in the last couple of days, I was pretty bearish and concerned in my subscriber update, which I put out over the weekend. I just t didn't think it was going to fall apart this quickly. I mean, I thought that it was going to come down and test 1675, but um, the really strong support, if you look at a monthly chart, um, throw a 40 month moving average on there, which has been an excellent trend indicator. Uh, go, I mean, going back 30 years or so. And that is, uh, I think about 1560 or so somewhere in that range. So I've been looking at that for the last couple months, even since this spring. And then the 50% retracement of the 2060 to 2020 move is also, uh, depending on if you use closing prices or intraday, I mean, that comes into play around 1560, 1570. And then if you're just drawing the uh, horizontal lines, looking for previous areas of uh, support and resistance, I think. 1550 is a really strong level. So I've been focused on that level um, for, uh, I guess, since the spring. Um, but I mean, you never, you you never want to be too presumptuous. But at this point, I I don't think gold is going to hold that double bottom support. I mean, it might. Uh, I mean, it might hold it for a month or a couple of weeks. But um, just the sentiment indicators, the setup in the market, the fundamentals right now. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on that, which I'd like to share, but the fundamentals are not, there's a lot of warning signs. And if a few things happen, we can get more clarity on that. But I think it's important to understand because a lot has kind of happened under the surface in recent months. All right. Well, let's do talk about the fundamentals because I did, one of the things I did want to ask you about this morning, Jordan, was fundamentals versus technicals. And if you were thinking like now's the time to buy because of, fun, of the fundamental factors behind gold and inflation, uh, you've probably lost your shorts today. Uh, and I'm right there with you. So if you're watching technicals, I mean, both fundamentals and technicals sound like in your mind are pretty ugly. Yeah. I mean, you have to look at both. And so I mean, I do, I, I, in the last, you know, four or five years, I've done a lot more fundamental analysis than I did before that. And it's really, I mean, if you can, if you have a, a good idea of what goes on fundamentally with the you know, macro and intermarket analysis and fed policy, and you just study history, you can see, uh, the turning points while at the same time, you know, gold is driven by falling real rates for the most part. And then it has a relationship with the stock market. And so, you know, since we had the August peak, the worst thing, and this surprised me, I mean, I'm not surprised by the correction that we've had, but the surprising aspect over the last year has been gold against the stock market. That has completely fallen apart to a degree which I did not anticipate. 
And I mean, it closed last week at a 15 year low, I think gold against the S and P. So that is really, really worrisome. Um, you know, at least here over the near term, because gold has never, gold has never had a real bull market without outperforming the S and P. So the last five years or so, I mean, that it has been interesting how gold has been able to have a pretty good move, yet it hasn't, it, it, looking at the whole period, it hasn't really outperformed the stock market. So, I mean, the real bull market has not started yet. So we're really, uh, we're a little early on that before we get into a real bull market. But the problem fundamentally, you know, stepping away from intermarket analysis, the problem fundamentally in recent months is, uh, gold, you know, we've had real interest rates depending on, you know, what, cause there's many different indicators you can lose to look at the, look at those. You can look at the tips yield on the 10 year, the, the five year, I mean, you could just look at economic data, which re is really lagging. But the fact is, if you look at all of those real rates have still been coming down and gold did not respond to that. And at the same time, gold, I think I think since June, you know, we had yields drop considerably and gold did not respond to that whatsoever. And so first on real rates, the reason I think why gold didn't respond to that is markets discount, markets anticipate, markets look at things in advance. And so the fact is, yeah, we've had inflation off the charts, but the rate of inflation is going to come down next year because these supply bottlenecks are going to end. And at the same time, if economic data, you know, we had a really good jobs report. If, and I'm not making a prediction here, but if the economy just continues to strengthen, we see the S and P continue to go higher. We're going to see more talks about a fed rate hike. Now I know because a lot of gold bugs are talking about a crash collapse, you know, they're never going to be able to hike rates. I mean, you have to tune that stuff out and, and follow the market and how it's reacting to data. And so, you know, I saw something a couple of days ago, there's a 62% chance the fed is going to hike next year. And, um, if the S and P, if we're just looking at, you know, from here to the rest of the year, if the S and P continues to go up, economic data just quietly strengthens, it doesn't have to be gangbusters, but if it just gets better, you know, gold drifts lower, the odds of a rate hike next year are going to continue to increase. And so uh, the reason why that's important is, so stepping back, so first of all, gold didn't react to falling real rates recently because real rates are going to rise next year, in my opinion. You know, the supply bottlenecks are going to end. So inflation, the rate of inflation is going to come down. So that by itself is is bad for gold. But at the same time, if the economy gets a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger than that. And that, you know, could be reflected by the S and P and gold's weakness right now. That is going to hurt, uh, real rates or, or push real rates even higher. So temporarily these fundamental factors, as we're looking ahead over the next three or six months, that explains why gold has been really weak. And, you know, at the same time, gold not reacting in June to falling bond yields is also important. Historically, if we look at the last, uh, what year are we in? Okay, 22. If we look at the last 50 years or so, uh, 40 or 50 years in gold, numerous times gold has bottomed. I mean, it happened a couple times in the 70s. It happened some other times as well. Numerous times gold has bottomed when the Fed has started hiking rates. It's very counterintuitive, but what happens is uh, you, if you have rising inflation or accelerating inflation, the Fed has to start hiking rates to acknowledge that. So that, that's why when the Fed usually hikes rates, it, it can mark a significant bottom in the market. Now, you also had that in 1999 and 2016, which were quick moves, uh, but, but those did last as very significant bottoms. So if the market is discounting tighter Fed policy uh, with respect to gold and gold isn't performing well, then the market doing that first hike history shows that's the turning point for gold. So if the economy in the data continues to strengthen and stocks continue to move higher, you will get a Fed hike next year. It's just a question of, you know, when is it going to be early in the year, middle of the year, later in the year? I don't know. That's all a moving target. But that when that happens, that'll be the point when our sector will start to take off again. Because it's it's not, you know, for gold to do well, you either need accelerating inflation or you basically need economic weakness 
uh, concerns on that front, rates being cut aggressively. There's no room to cut rates. So when that happens, you know, so economic weakness, bond yields going lower. We saw what happened in June. Gold did not react to that one bit. And so that explains that for gold to really move higher and, uh, you know, continue the move that it's had over the last four or five years, it's going to have to be accelerating inflation. And it's going, and that will be started by the first Fed rate hike, which I think is probably going to happen sometime next year. Now, that doesn't mean gold is going to completely decline from now until whenever the next hike is, but it, people are, they have to realize that the, it, that's probably the next fundamental catalyst. And it's not two or three months away. It's probably not six months away. Maybe it's seven or eight months away or nine to 12 months away if the data continues to get stronger. So somewhere in that range will probably be the point where we start to see gold taking off again. But here and now, we're, I mean, we're in a difficult situation. The market's oversold, but as I see it over the, you know, from now until the end of the year, uh, we're still going to move lower, unfortunately. So I know that was a lot to take in, but mm -hmm. that's how I see things fundamentally here and now. Let, 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 let me go back to the idea of Golden's relationship to the market, and let's just stick with the S&P. Does... Does the S and P need to correct in order for gold to outperform, or does it just need to lose less badly? Uh, here and now, I mean, it's either or. It's something I've been talking about in the last two or three weeks. That that's really that could be the next catalyst for precious or for gold, especially is the stock market correcting. But and there's a lot of indications that I mean it it should correct. However. Uh, maybe the market's going to continue to move higher before it corrects. I mean, the, in the immediate sense, gold is so broad. The technicals are so negative, even though the market's oversold. The technicals are so negative. I don't, I just, I, I don't think a correct, like an immediate correction in the stock market is going to help gold. It would have to be 15 to 20%. And, I mean, if that if that were to happen in the next month or two, the beginning of that would probably drag down precious metals, and then precious metals could have a, a really good rebound after the fact. Because if we look back over the last six years, all of the, um, you know, the three most significant lows in precious metals coincided with the three biggest declines in the stock market. So the stock market continuing to move higher. I mean, if that happens, that's just that's money that's not moving into precious metals. So there were a lot of people, generalist money, that were getting into precious metals 12 to 18 months ago, even at the end of 2018, 2019. And uh, I mean, they're all out now because the gold has dramatically underperformed that ratio over the last 12 to 15 months. And uh, as long as the market continues to move higher and higher, that's going to be bad for gold in the short term because that is going to reflect a strengthening economy and strengthening real interest rates, which again, that's bad for gold. And the very big picture, you know, I say the real bull market hasn't really started. I have this chart that I posted on Twitter a couple of times where if you look at, just look at the CAPE ratio, the 10 year PE for the stock market going back a hundred years and peaks in the CAPE ratio have, uh, tended when that's happened, you've tended to get a really significant bottom in gold or gold stocks relative to the stock market. So, um, you know, the next catalyst will be, in my opinion, the first rate hike for the Fed. And ultimately, you know, this economic cycle, I don't think it's going to last too long. But, you know, when we start to get to the end of this cycle, you know, maybe stagflation is an issue. The secular bull market that started in 09 for stocks, I mean, that could be ending. That is really going to be the point when precious metals will really explode higher. So that that that's an important takeaway is the fact that you know people are thinking, well, is the bull market over? Is the move over? No, it really hasn't started yet. I mean, if we're taking a bird's eye view, this cup and handle on gold is super, super bullish. But in every interview I've done in recent months, I've said, you know, I thought this would last at least 18 months, but it could last two years. It could last three years, which would put us in, uh, you know, that would put us another two years from now. We're only a, we're only one year into it. It was a nine year long cup and handle. So it's going to take more time to play out. But ultimately, when gold 
you know, breaks to the upside of this pattern, you know, that's when you're going to see 3000, 4000, $5,000 gold. But, you know, given everything that I've just said, this is not something that's going to happen in the next three, six or nine months, you know, over that time frame, what we're looking for is a, you know, a major bottom in the sector that will coincide with the fed starting to hike rates again, that that's the next phase. I mean, the, the, you know, beyond that, if we're looking, you know, 9, 12, 18 months from now, at that point, the key will be, okay, when, you know, when are we going to get stagflation if we're not already there? When is the, uh, uh, you know, are precious metals outperforming? The stock market is gold. You know, where's the cup and handle? Is gold, has gold gotten back to, you know, 2000? It's ready to break out. Uh, so I did that. That's my game plan going forward i forget what your question was i think i, I think i drifted <laughs> well, off yeah no, that's fine because it, you you mentioned like this 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 economic cycle and here's an idea that i've kind of been toying with in the back of my head jordan would love to get your thoughts on it when it comes to cycles right there's there's ebbs and flows to each cycle um i am kind of curious about this economic cycle and if the manufactured recession and stop on the economy from, uh, you know, uh, a year and a half ago, year ago, if it was so manufactured that the organic cycle never had a chance to run its course. So I guess that's the first question I have for you and your thoughts on that. And if it wasn't able to organically run its course, where does it leave us in the timing? Do we still are we still due for uh, that downtrend in economic growth? Uh, th those are very good questions. The first thing I'll say is I'm not an economist, so this is not my expertise on this area. But nevertheless, I like to talk, so I'll still give my opinion. Uh, I know I think you're right. I think that's a good point. And if you look back, I mean, there's a lot of similarities to the late '60s. And if you look at I mean, the 1960s, we had like a nine or 10 year long expansion. And then, I mean, granted, inflation was really an issue. But in the early 70s, that was only like a two and a half year long bull market in the stock market in the uh, economic growth cycle was only three years. So that followed a really long expansion. So you don't, you know, you don't get like a 10 year expansion and then another 10 year one without a, you know, a very significant recession for you know multiple years in between so we you know we had a two month long recession i mean that i've heard people as supposed experts say that in the media uh so maybe you know maybe that's that's true but, but only two months so you're right it was manufactured we didn't have a real long recession and given that and given the fact that the last cycle was uh you know 10 11 years whatever it was this economic cycle it's not going to be that long and obviously the government pumping tons of money i mean you're getting huge fiscal stimulus that is extending it to some degree um but the the growth you know we could get stronger growth over the next 12 18 months maybe i don't know um, the money from the infrastructure program. I don't know how quickly that's going to get into the economy and be spent, but that probably helps the growth rate somewhat. So, you know, and, and also credit, maybe credit standards now are like the lowest they've ever been, I think. Uh, and, uh, what there's one other, there, there's one other piece of, uh, like I, I well, bank lending. That's what I mean. Banks, you know, l looking to lend money, uh, their standards are like the lowest they've ever been, uh, Policy right now, um, I forget what the title of the chart was, but if you look at the financial markets, like policy is the easiest that it's ever been, basically. So you 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 consider those things. Uh, you consider the fact that uh, we're gonna, you know, we have huge fiscal stimulus. More is coming, um, and uh, the fact that you know COVID will wind down. I mean, if you look at the rest of the world, like people there are starting to get vaccinated, so. There's there's still going to be a lot of money hitting the economy, you know, globally at the same time over the next year or two. So, but you know, w once you look beyond, um, 
you know, when you think about 2023, 2024, I mean, you, you could have a real stagflation issue where you still have some inflation hanging around, but, you know, you really don't have uh, that much growth anymore. So I, to go back to your original question, I, yeah, I, I do think that this cycle, this particular expansion is not going to last that long, you know, because of the reasons you stated, but we have to understand that there's still a lot of fiscal stimulus being pumped in. More is probably coming. If you look at the way the markets are trading with gold being really weak, technically, you know, that's reflecting that we're probably going to see strengthening economic data, at least, you know, over the next two, three quarters. Well, we'll see how everything is reported here in the coming months, Jordan. But if uh, this correction continues for the next uh, year or two, you and I are going to find more things to talk about. <laughs> so, we'll see how see how the markets play out. Uh, thanks for joining us. I know this was kind of a quick, uh, quick notice, but uh, with this move today and precious metals, Jordan, I, I tell you what, it's worth talking about and sharing any thoughts uh, that we can get because it makes us all individuals. But, you know, with what you just said, the one thing that kept – that uh, made me think is, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I and I would say I don't think this is going to continue for more than a year. It's just okay. we have to we have to follow, you know, uh, the Fed funds futures and when they're pricing in a rate hike, that'll give us an idea. And then the technicals are, you know, we we've already been correcting for more than a year, and so I looked at the three worst bull market corrections. And if you and, and if you pull the average of those, it comes out to like a bottom in April at 1590. So now, I mean, I know that might sound terrible to some people now, but um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, April, what is that? Another seven months from where we are. So that I mean, that's just based on the average of some history. So I don't think this is a this is a repeat of like 2012, 2013. I mean, there's a lot of differences there. We've already had a pretty stiff correction for 12 months. So, I, I mean, I do want to make that clear. Yep, yep. Okay, Jordan, appreciate your time, and uh, may we all have thick skins moving forward here as, as, as a gold investor. So uh, take care, buddy. We'll talk to you again here in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for having me. The information presented should not be considered investment advice. Mining Stock Daily and its affiliates are not responsible for any loss arising from any investment decision in connection with the material presented herein. Please do your own research or speak to a licensed financial representative before making any investment decision.